YouTube, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. My name is Chris Basio, and today we're gonna to be talking about money management. To me, this is a topic that people overlook. This is a topic that no matter how much income you're making, whether you're making a whole bunch of it, or you're making a whole little of it, people of all tax brackets be messing this part up. Now, I don't claim to be an expert or anything like that, and the best answer I can give you on how to improve your money management is to talk to your bookkeeper, your accountant, or your CPA. Your accountant, your bookkeeper, or CPA, they're part of your team. You're the general manager, but you need your teammates in order to make crucial things happen like money management. Whether you're employed, you're self-employed, or a business owner, making money with weak money management skills can really hinder your growth and your opportunities. We're gonna keep it really, really simple, but it's gonna be effective, in my opinion. So it starts with one bank account. It doesn't matter if you're an employee, if you're self-employed, if you're a business owner, you need a bank account where everything goes to, all of your income. This could be your check every two weeks. This could be some side hustle money on top of that. If you use Square, if you get a check, if you got cash to deposit, it all goes into one bank account. This is your business account. And when I say business account, I don't mean you gotta have a LLC or be incorporated. Like Jay-Z said, I'm not a business man, I'm a business man, right? So this is your business account. With this account, anything you do to help you make more money, and again, you need to check with your accountant, is something you can write off. You expense it from this account. So let's say you're a teacher and you're going to a teaching expo that weekend, the hotel, the flight, the food, while you're there, as long as you're there for four hours out of the day, and again, check with your accountant. All those things you would use with your debit card attached to this account because those are all write-offs. And so your bank statement for this account is gonna show only expenses and income. It's gonna be very, very easy for the IRS or your accountant to see and track where your money's going. You wanna be honest. You don't wanna to try to hide things from the IRS or from your accountant. There's other ways to pay less in taxes legitimately and ethically. But at least with this strategy, it's clear and it's easy to read. I remember reading this book and it said, if you wanna take advantage of self-employed taxes, Regardless if you're an employee taking a W-2, act like you're self-employed and chances are you'll have write-offs that the self-employed or business owner enjoys as well. So if you have an eBay account where you sell stuff in, that could be one of your side businesses. Act like you're self-employed and you'll be able to expense things. So you have your main account, income coming in, expenses going out. If it's not related to your job or business, then it is not an expense. If it's not helping you make more money, it is not an expense. I would definitely read some books on tax strategy. This is one of my favorites. And get with a CPA or an accountant that is willing to educate you while you guys are working together. Now, once you have that business account set up, and let me reiterate, it doesn't have to be a business account where you have to have an EIN to, to open it up. This could be a personal account that you use as if it's a business account. Your next account that you would create is your personal account. And with this personal account, this is where you would pay your bills, like your groceries, your rent, electricity, so on and so forth. And what you would do is once a week, once a month, however you wanna pay yourself, you would just transfer or write yourself a check from your business account. So what ends up happening is all your income and all your deductible expenses come out of your business account and whatever you do with your personal account, it's up to you. The money has been accounted for and nothing that you spend out of that personal account is a write-off anyways. If you've been working for three months and paying yourself, let's say $1,000 a week, so you're transferring money from your business to your personal, making $1,000 a week, at the end of that quarter, if you see there's $5,000 in your business account and you decide, I'm gonna take that $5,000 and put it into stocks or something like that, you would transfer or write yourself a check from your business account to your personal account, and then from here, invest it in whatever it is that you wanna invest in. That would be called a distribution to yourself. But you always wanna have a buffer here in your business account for taxes and for future expenses because you don't want to overdraft on this account. If you look at the history of your expenses, let's say on average you spend 500 bucks a month in expenses, I would keep probably three times that, 1,500 bucks in there for your buffer. And so what happens is whenever you're gonna go pay taxes, let's say you pay once a quarter or once a year, 
you can then transfer whatever your tax bill is. You can transfer that money to your personal account and pay it. It's that simple, guys. Now, I'm going to tell you why this is so important. Come tax time, you could literally just print out your bank statements, circle your expenses. Now, I'm going to tell you why this is so important. It is scalable. So you start off with this map and you can expand from here. But come tax season, you can literally just print out your bank statements for your business account, hand them over to your accountant, and they'll do the rest. Or if you're competent enough, if you feel like you can handle it yourself, which I wouldn't see why not if it's this simple of a management system that you have, you'll be able to easily see how much you have for deductions, how much you can write off because all your expenses came from one account, and you'll be able to see what your income is. Try to match that income with any 1099s or W-2s you, you may have. And then what I like to do is attach these, these accounts to Mint. Mint is an app that helps you with your budgeting, but it also helps you look at your financial situation from a bird's eye view. You can attach all your business, all your bank accounts, your credit cards, your mortgage, and pretty much see a report card every single day if you wanted to. I definitely would recommend the Mint app and anything that Intuit really does. There'll be a link in the description if you want to download the app. But let's look at how this would scale. Let's assume that right now you're just an employee, you have a little side hustle, you're operating as if you're self-employed or you're self-employed or you have a business. Your money management system still looks like this. But then let's say your side hustle, your self-employed hustle, or your business starts to make some decent money. This is where you need to start talking to your accountant about strategies for the future. Should you incorporate? Should you get an LLC? After a certain amount of money, when does it make sense to do an S-Corp? And all these tax strategies would be associated with your business account. On the personal account side, your responsibility is to figure out after you spent your money on beer, Yeezys, a vacation or two, what should you put the rest of your money in? What would make sense tax-wise and what would make sense net worth-wise? How much excess are you going to have in your business account at the end of the year or at the end of half of the year? And where could you put that money to continue to grow your wealth? We're going to cover these topics in detail with future videos, but if you at least start managing your money this way, regardless of what happens in the future, you'll be set up to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. Filing your taxes will be a piece of cake. Underwriters, who are the people who decide whether you can get a loan or not, can look at your bank statements and see this guy, this girl, they seem to have it together. I'm telling you, if you're not already doing this, do it now and you'll thank me later. I remember 10 years ago, man, I was in a place where I just wanted to be able to afford to not have to depend on food stamps. I wanted to be in a place where I could afford a house and not have to live in an income restricted apartment. We had two kids and those income taxes, they were nice, but they were gone just like that. But I got to a point, man, where I had a plan and I was learning and I was getting confident and I didn't need food stamps. I was learning about real estate, I was learning about, about stocks, and I had a plan, but I was still living paycheck to paycheck. Every now and then, we still had to go get that cash advance from Amscot, every now and then. But things were looking up, I was, I was starting to learn things. And I knew, I knew exactly what I was gonna do with that next tax return. The one with the two kids, you talking about a $7,000, $7, dollars $9,000 check? I was gonna put it in real estate. Because I did not manage my money right. It was hard, because they wanna see bank statements. If it wasn't for my wife's W-2, we wouldn't have got approved for that mortgage. So even if you're in a situation right now where you don't know where to put your money, just know money's just a part of the game. We're playing Monopoly here. You gotta have credit, you gotta have cash. Don't settle for anything less. Of course, you can use the power of broke and figure out creative ways to get financed, creative ways to acquire assets, but I wanna push you guys to be on point. I want you guys to be strong with your credit, strong with your money management, and strong with your cash. We have these three things, we're gonna be able to make some amazing things happen in the next five to 10 years. Now this is the last part to your money management map. You got your business account, you got your personal account, and that's all you really need. But I really like the idea of automating your wealth. And what I mean by that is, whenever you get a check that comes into your personal account, you should be paying yourself first. When you have a job, when you're an employee, you get paid a check, and on that check, there's already money taken out. Money for Social Security, for Medicare, maybe your 401k, 
or whatever retirement plans your job, your employer may have for you. You need to be able to create this for yourself. We don't live in a day and age anymore where we can depend on social security, on 401ks. We have to be diversified. So what I want you to do is create a separate account where money is automatically transferred to the account at least once a month. If you wanna go a step ahead, there's an app called Capital. And what this app is, is it's pretty much a bank account, but it's a bank account that you can make folders inside of. And what happens is within this bank account, you can create a real estate folder, a stock folder, and set up different rules that Capital will automatically do for you. I'll give you two examples of rules. I would attach Capital to my personal account and any money that comes into that personal account, 10% of it would be automatically pulled. And what Capital will do with that 10% is it may say 5% is going into real estate and 5% is going into the stocks folder because those are the rules I chose. And once a month or once a quarter, I'll look into that account and I'll see I have, I have this much amount for real estate, this much amount to put in my stocks. I'll probably do something more like 10 for real estate and 5% for stocks because you're gonna need more money to get into the real estate game. But nonetheless, this is how you can automate wealth building for yourself. If it's automatically taken out, you might not even notice it. I'm telling you, I used this system, didn't even notice the money was getting pulled out. Three months later, I checked my account and I had some decent money to play with. During that three month span, I was investing in myself. I was learning, I was watching this channel because I subscribed. I was watching other channels, I was reading books. And when I saw that account after those three months of studying in parallel, I got excited. I got motivated and I really felt like this was the start of something big. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the channel. Please give me feedback in the comments. If there's anything you want to add or anything you want to say, it's appreciated. Some of you guys have been screenshotted or taking pictures of these videos and putting them on Instagram and tagging me. I've been resharing them on my stories. It is so much appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Thank you guys. See you on the next video.